Okay. So, I'm going to talk a bit about video game design. And um, first of all, I would want to talk about uh, video games themselves and a couple of things regarding them. Because most of us really uh, know or think we know what a video game is. Okay, it's an interactive um, electronic media. And it's uh, quite a straightforward, actually, because it's something most of us have uh, assumed greatly during the years. But of course, what if we are wrong? Because I don't know you, but I've been playing video games for a very long time. I mean, I was born in the 80s. And so the industry has grown with me for many years. And things have changed, but not a great deal, especially in the last few years. And that's peculiar in any industry, because things tend to evolve most of the time, especially when there's a, a big consumer um, uh, explosion at some point. And video games for the last, I don't know, 10, 20 years almost, have been quite the same. I mean, there's always a new technology, a new gimmickry, but the concept, the core mechanic itself, has stopped changing as quickly as it did when the industry started, as an industry itself. So, uh, most of us will talk about what is the pinnacle of uh, video games. What is the best game ever? Well, different people will give you different answers to this, uh, to this question. You might be asked, go ahead, what, what do you think is the best game ever? It's difficult to answer, but you can come on, just anyone? Does, does anyone have a personal favorite? Go ahead. I am Tush Thermalik, massively online multiplayer uh, World War II flight simulator. Wonderful. 50 people flying there. I fly German bombers. <laughs> <laughs> Beautifully said. <laughs> Well, you will turn to the industry, you can get into any page, um, one of these uh, massive uh, kind of um, agglomerating pages where you get reviews from billions of users, kind of like uh, a Metascore page or something like that. And you will find that, well, the pinnacles of gaming will be uh, typical things, kind of like uh, The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, or Super Mario 64, or Super that is uh, about the best we can actually achieve. And I think that's really uh, what you see in the picture. It's, it's a sandcastle. We, we're building on those. It's kind of like, okay, okay, if that's the best we can actually build, let's try to make ours as similar as we can to those models. Because the moment uh, they are as similar as uh, they can be to those models, then uh, we'll be achieving something great also. Instead of just uh, throwing everything into the garbage in the first place and trying to build your own castle. Okay? Because if you really, really try to imitate a pre-existing model because you think it's the best you can do, then it is going to be the best you can do. <coughs> okay? So, what I want to talk today is a bit about what a game is. So, what is a game? Seriously. Anyone? No <coughs> definitions? No one? This, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. It's a made up challenge where you get points. <coughs> it's a mean of challenge. Made up, made up challenge. Oh, made up challenge. Yeah. Okay, where you get points. Okay, well, that would be the definition of gaming. We, mm, no one else? No? You, you, might you do understand what I'm saying, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> okay, just wanted to make sure. Interactive program. Interactive program. I would like to you might compete for the points. You might compete for the points. Actually, even if you call it an interactive program, an, an e-book is technically an interactive program. Uh, well, not the e-book itself, but, you know, um, uh, an EPUB uh, file. So. In that case, if that's what I was actually asking, what is a game, um, I might go on to that your answers were actually the answer to the next question, which, what, is, what is a video game? And what makes a good game? <coughs> well, you might say it's, well, 
I have fun. But fun is something so, I don't know, magical and flimsy. Fun may, may mean something to some of you, and may mean something completely different to some others. So you can't actually rely on something that does, doesn't have a very clear and concise definition to uh, create a whole industry of it. Okay, I'm going to uh, make the most fun games I can. So what is fun? Well, I don't know, but I'm going to make the games um, uh, pursuing that goal, even though I don't actually know what the fuck that goal is. Uh, I'll try to edit that out of the video. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so, what should we actually avoid when creating a game? At least at first. Okay, well, video games are something technological. There's something that came to us through um, the technological progress of mankind during uh, the previous century. And what we had, well, well, we've always had access to games, but digital means have given us the way of creating better and more efficient games. And um, they've actually made the figure of the game designer appear. Because up to now, all we have games, but you didn't actually need a professional game designer. Because um, games didn't appear often enough to make that uh, uh, an actual running job. I mean, the guy who invented chess probably didn't retire from that. I mean, he, he, he was probably very popular and with the girls in bars and so, yeah, I invented chess. You know. <laughs> but um, apart from you know, a couple of free drinks, you, you mustn't uh, uh, get too ahead of yourself because I don't think he actually invented chess and checkers or something like that. Okay, so now nowadays you can actually design games for a living. And what you might get carried away with is like um, seeing that since the industry is technological and technology is always pushing forward, you might think, well, um, I have to push my games forward to follow that technology might make sense at first. You might see it in the industry a lot. Okay. What makes one game better than the other? Well, this one has better sound and better graphics. But that doesn't actually make the game very different. I don't know you, but when I play a game, uh, I might get uh, uh, really carried away with the graphics or the sound for the first 10 minutes. I was actually uh, talking about this this morning for a while. You, you, yes, you do get carried away, I'm, I'm sure. But after those first 10 minutes, you actually are so invested in the mechanic that if it were just a, a point and uh, a line, you'd probably just concentrate on the point in the line. Actually, um, you can't really say that the interface has so much to do with the game itself. Okay. You might be uh, really, really invested in something that is so damn simple that it could have been done 30 years ago. I don't know um, if you've heard about Flappy Bird. You probably have, of course, because you, you, you don't live under a rock. <coughs> so that is actually just pressing the screen with your finger and uh, a group of like 32 pixels just move up and down. Well, that's not actually state of the art for me. But it's had millions of players worldwide playing constantly and getting horribly frustrated and going back and keep on just pressing on the screen. So if you can invest in that, it's not because the graphics really carry you away or because the sound is absolutely amazing. It's because it's fun. Okay, so you mustn't get carried away by the fact that the tech gimmick is what gives you the game. What's happened with most tech gimmicks? Well, people just tend to forget about them after a while. I mean, you go, you see the gimmick, it, it really gets your endorphins uh, running, I mean, you go, oh man, I had to try this. I mean, I was mm, crazy to try Google Glass for some time. I tried Google Glass, I was with them for half an hour, and after the half an hour, I said, okay, well, I've tried Google Glass, I'll probably never use this again because it's a piece of, um, I'm not editing this out, so you can imagine what word I was going to say in continuation. So, 
Mm, same thing is probably going to happen with the Oculus Rift uh, or Rift D. It's actually, um, I think yesterday, it came up on all the press again because Facebook uh, bought um, the Oculus Rift for two thousand million dollars. Well, I don't know about you, but two thousand million dollars is quite a lot of money. So I mean, I suppose they actually know what they're doing, but. Even so, it's just a gimmick. What is it? It's a virtual reality uh, headset that gives you full uh, gyroscopic uh, uh, view of your surroundings. Yeah, must be really cool. But you know what also does that? My head. Look. Man! And it's full HD all the time. So, yeah, um, you might get used to it after a while, but I, I, the, the third time I knock over um, uh, the jars on my uh, table or something like that because I'm just walking around with a headset and I kind of and, and scaring my cat to the death. Then I'll probably think, okay, well, that was fun. I'll take off my headset and play on the screen. Uh, gimmickry, kind of like uh, um, the Wiimote for the Nintendo Wii. Well, kind of fun. I mean, when I saw it for the first time, I thought, oh, great. At last, we'll have a real Star Wars game where I can actually use a lightsaber. Well, that never actually uh, arrived. Uh, well, it did, but not very, uh, quite a flimsy example, actually. But um, the thing is, it, you get tired of that because you don't want to stop and get out of the game itself for an input. What is the most efficient way of doing an input? Well, it's probably just clicking a button. Okay, I don't want to have to interact with it physically. Why? Because, well, that actually makes that input far slower. And it actually gets me out of the game instead of into it. That's why the more complex games that appeared on the Nintendo Wii actually use the game as a regular gamepad instead of using the motion controls. Maybe you just gimmickly uh, use the game controls for some uh, couple of things or two, but you don't really use them in the game because it takes too long and it really gets tiresome after a while, especially uh, because motion control isn't that um, good and uh, the experience isn't that uh, perfected yet. In, you don't actually get any physical feedback from uh, what's on the other side. So if uh, the motion controller wants to be a handle and I have to pull that handle, I can actually not stop uh, at any point because there's nothing actually physically stopping me. And if I want to uh, use it to recreate, I don't know, a, um, a train or something like that, I'd actually have to recreate the physical train in my uh, living room in order to that, make that experience correct. And that's kind of, a, you know, if I can actually recreate a physical train in my, um, in my living room, I'd probably have enough money to buy a physical train and actually ride that, which is probably much, far more fun. So, let's keep that in mind. So when I was um, writing uh, the scripts for my, uh, my massive uh, course on, on video games, I stumbled up upon this uh, this bloke called Keith Bogan, and he has quite good ideas. He's been a lecturer and in New York and Pennsylvania, and he's the author of Game Design Theory, A New Philosophy for Understanding Games, and he understands the importance of vocabulary. Okay, well, why is vocabulary important? I'm not going to get all Wittgenstein with you, but um, vocabulary is very important because it conveys ideas. And if you don't have the proper words, you might not be able to uh, convey your ideas to another person. You, you have difficulties of um, dialoguing with someone when you don't speak the same language. And even when you do speak the same language, if you have an idea but you don't have the proper words for it, you can't actually give that idea in a very precise way. To, your, to the other person you're talking with. That happens a lot with game designers. They can't actually explain what they're doing because they don't have the proper words to do so. 
because uh, before I asked what is a game, and most of you just looked into uh, infinity. I don't know if it's, if it's because I'm boring as hell, but uh, at first I really think that no one actually has a pure definition. It's like when you ask what's the color, what is the color red? Okay, well that's far more difficult actually to explain because it's a concept. Well, a game is also a concept that we can explain, but we don't really know how to, which is uh, kind of messed up if you stop to think of it. So the importance of that vocabulary is actually what might be pulling the industry back a bit in, in a certain way. So uh, this bloke, Keith Bogan, turned up with um, a nice method called the forms to precisely talk about what you want to design. And first of all, I'm going to explain the forms. I'm going to then explain the value of each of these forms. And um, then I'm going to give you a big diagram of how it all um, meshes together into a nice uh, big mess. And um, if all that goes correctly, I think you can have a better idea of how to focus on design if uh, at any point you actually want to build a real game. Okay, so the first, uh, the first form is what um, you could call a pure simulator, okay, a toy. It's a surrounding <coughs> where you can uh, interact, but uh, that's it. I mean, you, should, you can just do whatever you want. It's what you might call a sandbox, which is very popular right now in gaming. And mm, maybe the best examples are like uh, the free fly form of flight simulator and things like that. Because uh, it's uh, the kind of thing where you don't have a set of rules. You just have uh, the main set of rules of interacting with the world. But you have no goal. You have nothing really to do with that. You make the game yourself. So that would be the first form. It's the simplest one. It's the one that has less restrictions, and it's the utmost boundary of interactive entertainment. So from there, all we have to do is just add a goal to the pure simulator, to the toy. Okay? And we have what we call a puzzle. Now, can anyone give me an example of a puzzle game? Okay. I, I, love it because everyone gives the same example every single time and I always get the, the chance to say no, I'm sorry, that's not a puzzle. Um, people tend to call games like Tetris or Columns a puzzle because, uh, you know, magazines tend to call uh, games like Tetris or Columns and so a puzzle also because they resemble jigsaw puzzles. But the mechanic of a puzzle, a jigsaw puzzle, what is it? What, what, what is the word that turns up in your mind when you think of a puzzle? Piece. Hmm? Piece. You have to find pieces and put them in the right order. That's it. Because what you're looking for is a solution. So the Legend of Zelda would be a puzzle. Technically, yes. Most games uh, we call, video games we call um, games, are more a puzzle than a game. And so, because we're looking to solve. You can't solve chess. I mean, you can finish a match, but it's not solvable. There's no one way to finish it correctly. Okay. You can play on and on, and you can't solve bomb. Actually, chess is a bad example, because uh, through uh, infinite mathematical iteration, you can actually find the perfect algorithm for chess. It hasn't been found yet, I don't think so, at least. But uh, you, it might be possible. But yes, there are games that just are not solved. But puzzles are. And it's actually their goal to be solved. You have to solve a puzzle, otherwise it's not a puzzle. So when you have a sandbox, a toy, and you add a goal, uh, a solution, you get a puzzle. And that would be the second <coughs> form. So when you put some competition into a puzzle, what do you get? Well, what you really do get is a contest. A contest is a measure, measurement. 
of a normally a single number, for example. Uh, you can have all sorts of contests. You can have a contest of strength when uh, we're um, arm wrestling. Or you can have a contest of, I don't know, luck. You want to see who has more luck of two people and you do a raffle. That is a contest. Okay, it has a certain given set of rules and it has a solution, a goal. And it has a competition because you're trying to be the one who has the biggest number of something, of anything. But it is a competition. Okay? So that gives pure simulation plus a goal gives us a puzzle. Puzzle plus competition gives you a contest. And finally, if you get to decide. Can you actually decide in a contest? Well, if you get to decide in a contest, it's not a very good contest if you stop to think of it. Uh, because you're trying to measure something as precisely as possible. So if you can wave around it, it's usually because you're cheating or you're going against the rules. I mean, when I'm arm wrestling, I want to make sure that both uh, arm wrestlers are in um, the same position, more or less. You can't kind of like wiggle your elbow or or just slap him with the other hand or something like that, because uh, although that might be a decision of how to uh, how to win easily, it would go against the rules. The best contest is the tightest one. I mean, when you're doing a weightlifting contest, you have to acquire a very very uh, specific position when lifting uh, weights or when your um, sports in general are all contests and there is a very precise way of doing it correctly and if you uh, don't do it that way then you're not competing okay you're normally cheating and the tighter the, the set of rules and the better you can measure the number the better the contest and if you don't well when the rules are open and you can actually decide what you're going to do Normally, they are not considered sports any longer. Okay, they're just uh, you know hangouts with people, <clears throat> which doesn't mean they're not fun. It just means that they uh, they aren't efficient when doing what they are actually doing. Oh, this actually passed uh, to game altogether. I don't know uh, if I actually pressed it myself. Well, so this the game itself would be the very last step to uh, all this construct, okay? We go from the toy, to the puzzle, to the contest, to the game, and all we have is just add a little ingredient, a little extra ingredient there, and that just powers it up once, once more, once again, and all the way. And we could really uh, create a schematic on this, where game would be the inner core, then contest would be the next layer, and puzzle would be the next layer, and then the toy would be the outmost layer, because the game is the one that has the most restrictions. So actually, a game is a contest of decision making. Okay, what you get to do during a game is you make decisions, and actually, uh, they have to be interesting decisions. Otherwise. And the game isn't really efficient at the right time. You have to be uh, deciding constantly in the best way possible, and that way you can actually call it a game. In that way, Tetris is a very good game. Why? Because you get to make decisions constantly. It doesn't have a goal in itself, as in you can't solve Tetris. So you can't really call it a puzzle. But you do get a competition, and you do get to decide all the time how that, uh, how to solve each part inside the game. So it continues giving you that feedback of um, of constant uh, decision making, and that really builds the game up. Yeah, go ahead. If I understood um, what the 
if I with the the other day with Arturino, that uh, was I think a contest of strength. Yeah. It wasn't a game. No, no. I, ca I called it game, probably the wrong way. Yeah, that's precisely what I was going on at the very beginning. It's um, it's difficult to be precise about what you're doing when you don't have the right vocabulary. So you call game anything, but then that isn't exactly a game. And so you can't really convey what you're trying to build. All of these exist in the video gaming world. We call all of them video games, but um, they're not so specific. Games are usually divided by uh, different sets of mechanics. Actually, in board games, they, they are way ahead of video games in that way. They, they have a very, uh, mm, a very clear set of, of uh, rules and so. And in, uh, if you go into a board game shop, you will see that puzzles are on one shelf and games are on another and contests are on another. Okay, you, you will find that um, those, those uh, separations made from a, a long time ago. Okay, but in video games, you'll just see a common shelf with lots of titles. So it's not very clear how to build that separation. Actually, it's not very clear inside the game itself. So what is the value of a, each of these forms? Well, the value of a toy, a pure simulator, is uh, mapping, it's exploration. Okay, it's, it's similar to um, playing. Playing not as in playing a game, but in playing, as in creating your own experience. Maybe uh, Minecraft is a very good example of this, where you do create your own experience, mm, building with Lego and so and so on. It's uh, learning all the ins and outs of a given system, and uh, it's actually piecing together the rule set itself. It's you don't you aren't given the rule set, you uh, you create it, and you build your own experience upon that. And you can build a game, as I, I explained before, out of a simulator. But it's not the point of the simulator, the simulator itself. The simulator just gives you the ground, and you just go on and play from there on. Minecraft actually has an FPS nowadays. Yes, well, I know. But um, uh, it, the, the simulation itself, the toy, is the, the main mechanic inside uh, inside Minecraft, although there has been, uh, there is a game, there is also a contest, and there is also a certain puzzle to it. So what I was saying before is it's difficult to separate each of these into completely uh, strict compartments, but they do have, they do tend to appear a lot all together in video games. And what I'm going to explain now is that the fact that these, the value of each of them individually for example, the value of mapping and exploring, gets in the way of the values of some other forms. And if it gets in the way of another form, then you, you're in trouble because you can't create the most efficient experience you want. Because if uh, creating this makes the, this give it a lot of noise, then you're not making a good this due to the existence of the other form, the coexistence of the other form with the form you're trying to create. Okay, I'll, I'll get there. Um, we're going to go through puzzle now. What's the value of the puzzle? Well, this is actually quite straightforward. Actually. The value of the puzzle is the answer. It's what you want. When you're given a puzzle, what you try to do is you try to solve it. It's what we normally think when we think of a puzzle or a riddle, okay? You're given uh, something that you don't know the answer to, and you do all you can to uh, actually get that answer, okay? You're, you're scoring the edges of the rule set, which we have to already have, okay? If you don't have the edges of that rule set, then you're kind of screwed if you try to find the answer to that, because you might just, you know, wander away into the wilderness. That's why you need those edges created, which don't exist in the toy or the simulator, um, in order to find the answer, okay? 
And uh, you have to understand that there's a difference between the answer and the answer. Okay? I, mm, you, you, the, the, the answer in capital T, capital A, is the final solution to that puzzle. Once you've found that answer, you can play the puzzle again. If playing is actually the appropriate word for this, but uh, the experience is completely different because you already know how to solve it. Okay, you know what it looks like at the very end, and it's never the same that when you solved it the first time. So it loses part of its value of puzzle once it's already solved. Well, the value of the contest, as I explained before, was, is the measurement itself. Okay, um, a contest is getting the right number, getting the highest number, usually, or getting the lowest, or getting that number, okay? And you might be competing against yourself, against someone else, against God knows what. But the measurement is mm, very similar to what we uh, really expect. What, who has more of resource X? Maybe speed, strength, uh, memorized facts, or even luck, okay? As I said before, a raffle or a roulette is a um, is a contest of luck, and then what is the value of a game? And this is very very important, uh, at least to me. I, I think I find this very important, and it's the understanding. Okay, um, the value of a game. Maybe uh, understanding isn't the, the greatest word for this. I'd say it's more the mastery. It's, it's acquiring a skill, it's getting to be very good at a game is what normally is the value of the game itself. Okay, when, um, once you understand the mechanic, being able to efficiently use that mechanic is what is compelling. Um, I don't know how many of you have been uh, hardcore Tetris players, but the thing is, the faster it gets, the better, almost. You, you start at a very low level, it, it pampers you a bit, like, it's, it's okay, don't worry. And then it starts getting harder and harder, but you're getting better and better. And that actually is what drags you directly into the game. It's the mechanic itself. It's the understanding how it works. And now I understand it. I get uh, um, to master it, and once I master it, I can actually keep on learning <coughs> and learning. So, gaming and learning are very similar things. It's that evolution of the player that uh, mm, lets him become a master. You, the grandmasters in, che uh, in chess are um, people who play really well. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm probably not discovering anything new to anyone, but it is important to ha take that in mind. Why? Because um, the people who actually have mastered the game and they understand the mechanic better than anyone else. And that's what has made them masters. They're not lucky. Maybe they are, I don't know. But um, the thing is, what they have more than anyone else is a very, very, very tight understanding of how that mechanic goes along. So, as I say here, understanding is the act of adding to a complex web of heuristics that a player will build over time. Okay? Fun in strategy games comes from the moment of building this understanding. So, just going on about understanding uh, a bit longer. The way that understanding happens okay, in the game is because the decisions we have to take in games have to be ambiguous. If there's a clear solution to a problem, then it's not really a decision. Okay, it's, it's more of a puzzle. Because there is a correct way of doing things and then a wrong way. In most games, there aren't Mm, correct ways of going along. I mean, there are better ways, 
or worse ways, but maybe something that looks worse to someone might not be so because you're kind of planning upon that or expecting it working in a certain way. So you can drive the mechanic yourself through that understanding. So ambiguous decision making is what really makes a game being served a constant set of difficult and ambiguous decisions will make a game better. In order for this feedback to result in, uh, in understanding the decision must be endogenously meaningful and the consequences has to be permanent. If uh, there is no permanent consequence, then it's just trial and error all the time and you don't learn from it. And since learning is such a is of such importance to the mechanic itself, then um, you don't really get anything out of it, or you get much less than when you really get stuck in something. It happens a lot in chess. Yes, go ahead. Then why all the modern games where nothing is permanent, like uh, GTA 5 or Skyrim? When you die, you have to play again from 20 seconds earlier. Well, and that actually uh, makes dying in a game um, something absolutely meaningless right now and it really takes away a bit from the game it makes the game far more similar to a puzzle and that's the thing most most of these games for example Skyrim what is a game in Skyrim uh, you might think the battle mechanics the fighting and it's actually not very good. So, what is uh, that makes Skyrim a game? Well, I wouldn't really call it much of a game. I'd call it more a puzzle. And so, when you take lives away, the life system like you had in uh, the original Super Mario's, then what you remain with is uh, just uh, a, a simple and quite straightforward puzzle. You don't get to take many decisions and those decisions aren't real decisions because they have absolutely no consequence. If a decision has no consequence then it's not a decision. It's just a way of conveying a line in a slightly different direction. And that doesn't make a game, I insist, it makes a puzzle. Mm, what do most modern games actually get? Well, uh, they actually get even uh, more absurd, including a life system which is technically infinite. For example, in, in the modern Super Mario games, you get lives, but when you finish all your lives, you just click on continue, and you get all your lives back, and you just continue playing. Well, actually, that, mm, mm, that's even worse than just backtracking a few meters, because I, it, it's almost mm, mm, bureaucracy, okay? And there's nothing worse to a game than bureaucracy, okay? We try to move away from that, uh, because uh, part of gaming is evading, and once uh, those lines interclash, then you're, you're really in for uh, a terrible surprise. It's kind of like what happens in the world of Warcraft. Um, once uh, you finish your day job and you go home and you start mm, doing your chores in your video game, then you have to be aware that something is going horribly wrong okay, with gaming. Because when, when what, uh, you have to work in the game in order to wait, no, no, but I, I'm just grinding in the game in order to uh, get enough gold to make it fun again. Okay, well, Aren't you aware that there might be something wrong there when you have to work for a very long time to get a short amount of fun? Can't they just make it fun all the time and, you know, and get the grinding out of the way? Well, mm, that's not a very efficient game design, at least not from my point of view. It's a very, very efficient uh, uh, company design mm, that they have because they've got lots of people on servers all the time just kind of... Uh, uh, using up uh, bandwidth and, um, and all sorts of resources to get their digital money and what they are actually doing is they're charging real money for all the time that people are on their servers. Mm, 
because they want a very short gaming experience, but they have to work a lot to get that. Well, I'm sorry, but I don't really think that that's how things should work. I am aware that it's the, form, that it's the way they do work, but I don't think that, that we should keep on working in that direction. The other day, we, uh, we saw these things about free to play. Okay, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't know if any of you um, I really believe in this free to play thing, but uh, I think it's uh, probably the worst thing that's happened to the gaming industry ever. Because I can understand that uh, you have to monetize and uh, that it's an industry and that people have to win money some way. But um, these games where if you want the real fun, then uh, you have to constantly pay, pay and if you pay uh, more and more, it gets even more fun and fun. That means that you actually are aware that you can make something much better, but you're not giving me that experience uh, because you, you want to tempt me into buying into that. Man, um, I, I, don't, I kind of feel dirty every time I talk about that, but, um, but I understand it exists, okay? Because uh, people are willing to actually pay into that. It's dangerous. It's dangerous when uh, we turn ludopathy into a mechanic in our companies. It's kind of like, oh, wait. Wait, oh, this really rich and lonely person wants to pay me a lot of money, so I suppose I can just let him think he's better than the rest by giving him uh, freebies in my game. Not freebies, sorry. <laughs> Paybees. Uh, no. No, I don't think that's the way to do things. So, the conflicting values. We've talked about the values of uh, toys, of puzzles, of um, what do we call it, um, contests, and of games. And what I was going on before, I, and I want to just uh, back my on that, is the most important difference between forms is that each form has different and indeed conflicting values. Okay. It's very important because if you want to build a toy, if you want to build a puzzle, if you want to build a contest, or if you want to build a game, the best thing about each of these particular things conflicts with the best thing of the others in a certain way. Okay? The values of a game conflict with the values of a contest, because a contest is a measurement, and decision-making shouldn't be possible, as it would distort the, measure, the measurement itself. And that's a fact. It's what I was saying before. If you want to put in decisions, don't try to measure something very precisely. You're not doing a very good contest. It's what happens with Skyrim. Um, it's a beautiful uh, simulator. It's a great, actually, fantasy simulator, but the game tends to get in the way all the time. It's kind of like, um, if you want to do the best simulator ever, then try to get the gaming mechanics out of the way. And if you want to do a really good game, then try to get the simulation uh, mechanics to not be your core. Otherwise, you won't be doing one thing or the other. I mean, I've invested lots of time uh, into some games, I must say. I have a problem with this. But, um, but the truth is that I am aware that things aren't going in a very good direction. At least they haven't been going in a very good direction in a very long time. Uh, as I, I, I told uh, uh, a couple of you a few days ago, Genres right now in the video game industry uh, are a very, very sad thing. It's as if you took a collection of versions of Sweet Home Alabama, and I always use the same example, and you call that a genre. They're not a genre. They're versions of the same song, and that's what we've got to right now. We call third-person shooters or first-person shooters a genre. And they're just a reskinning of the same game with a slight tweak to one mechanic or another. 
but uh, no matter you're shooting aliens or Nazis, you uh, tend to be in a very uh, similar context. Okay, what, what's the, the difference really? It's just point and uh, click, or point and press. And, and you're not doing a different game, you're just doing a different uh, overall world. Because games aren't uh, linear, and narration is, and that's really gotten into the way of game design quite a lot lately. Because we've turned um, a non-linear decision-making motor into a um, way of conveying a narration. Games have been living up to uh, movies and cinema for such a long time that right now, um, they're quite more than intertwined. And that's a problem, because uh, cinema and narration is completely linear. So the moment you try to put that into a game, you just uh, the game keeps getting in the way of the narration all the time, because you, you, the player wants to do stuff and you can't do it, because, you know, it, otherwise I can't tell you my pretty story. It's great. Telling stories. I mean, telling stories is one of the best things that humanity has ever had, and that's the way we've moved forward. But gaming is also something that's made us move forward, and, uh, and it's also something that humanity has always had. And they haven't been together till uh, very recently, so it's very normal that they actually get in the way of each other. Because um, if you you come up to me with a multiple ending kind of um, uh, story. Come on, that isn't that's still equally linear. I mean, you just go into a line and it turns into three or four lines, but it doesn't turn into an open shed of decisions. Because in order to do that, you'd need an open shed of decisions being moved by uh, humans. Because the game actually has a mechanic and has a way to go and in, no one can make those decisions at a rate that is needed by a human player but other human players. That's probably why multiplayer online gaming is so popular right now. Well, why, why using the form system as a basis to decide on your game design? It's really a question of efficiency, okay? Since each form has conflicting values, we can use uh, the system to identify and reduce or remove internal conflicts, making the design more efficient. The more efficient my design, the better. The, the better I am actually pointing at where I want to get. Do I want to make a simulator? Do I want to make a puzzle? Do I want to make a game? Well, what's going to get in the way? Okay. The result is a more pure and effective machine is producing one of these values. Okay. And so, finally, this is the final schematic of the, the form system itself. You go from games on the inside, then contests, puzzles, and toys, and each of their specific values. And I seriously believe that following this will make your designs better. Seriously. But anyway, since I've been going on about this for quite a while, um, I intend to uh, create a little debate on it. I don't know if uh, m most of you are into design or have ever even considered it, but I think it's important that we, we may talk about it for just a, a short while.